everybody. Welcome to the Talking Disney Classics podcast. We are really excited today to, <laughs> to, to say it with a slap. We are here to talk about <laughs> the very interesting package film from Walt Disney Anime Studios, the ninth animated classic. Uh, we're talking about Fun and Fancy Free, and I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and my very good friend Stanford is here. Hi. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> this is an interesting one to to review in the canon. Absolutely. Oh, this is an interesting <laughs> film. I'm really anxious to talk to you about it, Rachel. Yeah. Or more yeah. like to help me process through it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's interesting because we hadn't talked about any of the package films, and then we reviewed the uh, the South American films in December, and then in January we reviewed the um uh make not make my music um or no that was that in february i can't remember but anyway yeah and then we did uh melody time yes and then uh no we did snow white in january and then we did melody time in february and then now we're doing fun now and fancy free <laughs> yeah the random the random number generator is giving us package films yeah they're punishing us for getting so many <laughs> so many of the renaissance films in a row exactly. uh, yeah this this film came out in 1947 and the package films were a, a series that, that were kind of by necessity where they were trying to make something to put out during world war ii and uh, so they kind of keep the studio going uh, and this one is is one of the ones where it's just basically two uh two films two shorts yes uh, as opposed to melody uh melody time and make my music tv you know i just mm -hmm. you're never seeing it on tv yeah and uh so i think you know there's something uh something like they they used to compile them all together and there'd be like a whole episode a whole vhs tape on like friendship and it would be right. all these shorts and stuff and on. shorts yeah and mickey and the beanstalk was included in one yeah in one of those in those mm -hmm. and it's interesting too and i don't know we'll get there but the mickey and the beanstalk short in this in fun and fancy free is is really broken up with these weird inter interstitials with edgar bergen i know we're gonna talk you know? about that <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna get there but so that was kind of shocking too because it's like wait where's this commentary coming from you know <laughs> right <laughs> from uh instead of just kind of all the, the, the short just playing continuously yeah uh so let's just dive in and talk about this uh so the it starts out with jiminy cricket narrating Which also is random <laughs> to yeah. me it's like it is now, why is Jimmy, why is Jimmy Cricket in this movie? <laughs> and I guess it was the first character to be uh, kind of spun off. Yeah. From one of the one of the narrative films. So obviously you had like the Fab Five, but they weren't part of, it's not like you had Grumpy as his own movie or, uh, you know, one of the characters from uh, any of the other films. Yeah. Like, and it, if, if I'm not mistaken, it it was it was it kind of launched Jiminy Cricket into a a new role because he became a narrator uh, with stuff with the um, Mickey Mouse Club show, oh, okay. you know, in the in the fifties, and then uh, he hosted stuff on on you know the various iterations of the Wonderful World of Disney. Oh, he, you know, he was like he was like a, a uh well, he's some kind, kind of, of a, some kind of a host yeah you know yeah. like a host role and so anyway this i guess was his first time I guess you see him later that. you see him in mickey's christmas carol yeah too uh, yeah later on i mean as uh goes to past mm -hmm. uh and kind of sort of a narrator uh and so that 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 makes sense uh are you a are you a jiminy cricket fan um I like Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, I think Jiminy mm -hmm. Cricket is really is, is is really a cute, great character, yeah. and I like I particularly like you know these Cliff Edwards, who was his original voice in the Pinocchio film, and in this one, I think he's just got such a charming voice that mm -hmm. works so well. Uh, yeah. So that that part, I I 
I really like, although I still felt like it was very random. Was very <laughs> this, random. This movie. Very yeah. random. <laughs> and he sings, I'm a happy go lucky fellow. Yeah. Which he almost has composed... a. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, please, after you. He almost sounds a little bit Fred Astaire ish to me. Yes. In this. It's, the delivery is very interesting. It's, it's, it's almost, it seems different than, I mean, you can tell by his voice, you know, that, that it's, you know, Jiminy Cricket slash yeah. Cliff Edwards, but. But he does, yeah. It's really good analogy comparison. This does sound very much like Fred Astaire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's one of my f- all-time favorite movies. We should watch it because it's coming up on Easter. I absolutely adore Easter Parade. Oh, absolutely! I love that movie yeah. so it's much. Judy, it's Judy and, Garland and yeah, yeah. and it it's, just was making me think of him. Uh, you know, just that whole scene in Easter Parade when he's, uh, he's the whole song with the hat. Oh. He's singing that song. I don't know why. It made me think of it when he's just, I'm a happy-go-lucky so fellow. It kind of yeah. had that same sort of feel to me uh, in it. And uh, I, I feel like, uh, I mean, not to be on an Easter Parade podcast, but but I, I feel like that movie is never talked about. It was one of the great musicals, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> Irving, songs by Irving Berlin and directed yeah. by Lisa Minnelli. It's so that, good. I like it better than White Christmas. I do. It's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but- <laughs> well, and speaking of music too, you, um, the songs, this, or that happy go lucky fellow song was written by this, by the same songwriting team that wrote the songs for Pinocchio. Disney's Pinocchio. Yeah, right. So. Lee Harlan and yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, Ned Washington. Yes. And uh, so uh, we see Jiminy, uh, he, he's saying, everyone is worrying too much. And I had to laugh because, you know, I'm, I'm watching this movie and everybody right now is going crazy. Like it's <laughs> like people are, people are selling hand sanitizer on eBay and, and fighting over toilet paper and the world is yeah. going nuts. And, and so it was kind of a, it was, it was sort of, a surreal moment, you know, like Jimmy right. Cricket and the headlines and everything. And I, 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 I think the, uh, the headlines, I wrote down the headlines that he sees Jiminy. Oh, cool. We have, we have the human race is going crazy. And then there's catastrophe scene as crisis looms. Yeah. We have scientists commission doom report. <laughs> we have yeah. martial law proclaimed all over the world. <laughs> yeah. We have oceans will gobble earth scientists forecast. <laughs> You know, yeah. Isn't yeah. This, you know yeah end of the world near astrologers predict a yep. community picnic postponed <laughs> 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 yeah that, that and, would make me laugh in con- yeah. you know, the context too yeah, yeah. right i mean that's the most dire of all yeah and uh and then uh, he says why get so excited whatever is going to be will be so <laughs> wisdom from jiminy cricket that's right. it's just just what we need that's right that's what we need today too and it's so interesting is you you think i mean clearly so much has changed and then so much hasn't yeah yeah you know? it was it was kind of surreal like mm-hmm. uh, you know you're gonna get the hand sanitizer that you need in life at all yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um <laughs> yeah and so then we get into Bongo, and Bongo is narrated by Dinah Shore, and I think she does a nice job. Well, narration. I do too, and and you know, it just plays to her strength. I think Dinah Shore had a, ha, has a great voice. Yeah, and and she's 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 a good narrator, uh, and and a, I think a, and a good singer. Yeah, you know, um, and I really like the look of Bongo. I mean, I think that the, I think that the art direction of Bongo. Yeah, is really solid, and then so that's too. about all the nice things <laughs> I have to say about yeah. Bongo. Yeah. <laughs> Although one interesting yeah. thing of note, just really about Bongo too, and and I had forgotten this. So that little children's book I was referring to, I really uh-huh. think it was a picture book. You know, and again, it was so long ago. Yeah, I wish I could remember, and I wish I could find it. You know, I wish I had it. I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember seeing it past childhood, but. <laughs> Um, maybe my parents got rid of it too. Like, oh, we hate this. You know, this we gotta get, donate yeah. this book or whatever. Right. But, um, but uh, it it it's based on a on a story by Sinclair Lewis, who you know is a is, is a noted American author called Little Bear Bongo, 
And I thought I should just try to find that one of these times. And I, I, I didn't, you know, in time for our, our mm-hmm. recording, but, but I, I want to check it out. It's a, it's a short story. Cause I, I had to read some stuff by Sinclair Lewis in college, some novels. Yeah. And they're, and they're, I, mean, he, he's, I, I he's highly doubt writer. Highly doubt heavy. Sinclair is saying it with a slap. <laughs> they, I bet you. I, I have a feeling Disney added that I, in. I. That's <laughs> exactly what I want to find out. It's like, did he really include that? <laughs> because wow, that um, that whole that whole sequence. Yeah, that would be interesting. Just can't uh, wait for that to get over with every time it starts. <laughs> But I, I do, I, I enjoy the backgrounds. I think it looks really pretty. Oh, I mean, I it, love the look of it. I love it. Yeah, it has that Dumbo kind of aesthetic, yes, uh, which exactly. I enjoy. And the, uh, the you get sort of the, the feeling if he, you know, we find out he's the pampered bear uh, in the, it, with the gilded in the, cage. In the gilded cage, yeah. Yeah, he dreams of being free in the woods. And uh, one day, he uh he is able to break free into the woods uh the forest gets really scary at night uh, it takes a long time for him to get out there see th- yeah that's the really uh, probably the main issue i have with bongo is that it's really dry dragged out it I think, is way I think, too long yeah i think it's, it's it's way too long for for what they're trying to 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 illustrate and not that my entertainment is the is the thing that should drive it but i mean i could truly say i every time i watch this sec sequence i get so bored yeah it's i really it i'm just bored out of my mind yeah. like, and then <laughs> and then the slapping part starts and just like are you serious <laughs> you know yeah. anyway well and one of the things i hate in early disney is like the insta love kind of thing where yeah uh, where a male character will see a female character and all of a sudden their eyes will go all buggity and they'll be like hypnotized yeah i hate like, that like and in bambi just, and yeah and bambi know. jungle book There's a lot of them yeah. uh it, fox and the hound i hate that and so <laughs> this is, that happens here and uh yep. and you've got this female character I forget her name. It's I think it's Lulu Bell. Lulu Bell, and it is kind of weird right? because they're like the only ones that are small. Yeah, <laughs> they're the only small bears, and all the other bears are big. So I guess yeah. they're they're made for each other. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, because she, she's yeah she's like five or six times smaller than that big bear who yeah. is yeah like you know so weird. Be her like her main suitor. Yeah. Right. And she like bats her eyes, and then all of a sudden he gets all hypnotized, and I really, really hate that. And uh, and then we get this. Uh, uh, she's mad because he won't slap her. And in this <laughs> this world of the forest, uh, you say it with a slap. And yeah, that's how you say "I love you" is that you, the bears slap each yeah. other. And here's yeah. some of the lyrics. It says. When a bird loves a bird, he can twitter. When a puppy falls in love, he can yap. Every pigeon likes to coo when he says, I love you. But a bear likes to say it with a slap. And then it goes on. It says, says, you can ask any bear, oh, there's nothing to compare with a love tap strong or weak. So if you're ready for romance and you ever get the chance, grab your girl, give her your cheek. And... Uh, so yeah, I so when love comes along, don't be silly. Never ever waste your time like a sap. Let the others hug and kiss, but the bear facts are this: that a bear likes to say it with a slap, 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 slap. And <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I think this is. I have two songs I think are the worst songs in all of Disney, canon. I think this song, and I think uh uh you're a great guy whatever the from hunchback and it's not a guy a guy like you like you yeah yeah because a guy like you is so hurtful to the narrative of that movie it is so out of place so it just oh like it doesn't even it's actually kind of cruel and mean and it's this it's so tonally off it doesn't work at all it's just so it's bad like on its own it's a fine song but it's so detrimental to the success of that film i think yeah and then then this which is just like i mean i know that the 40s were a different time 
But I still don't think they were wanting those kids to go slapping everybody. Slapping each other. Like, and what? Yeah. And it, yeah, it, I, it doesn't work. It's just, it's just, it's the continuation of the things that, the, the story, none of the story works in, the, in, in this short for me, as I mean, I've already said. <laughs> why on earth would you want to tell kids that if they love each other, they should slap each other? Say it with a slap. Yeah. I mean, that's so bizarre. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I kind of feel like uh, the, uh, you know, the, the old Humphrey Bear, Humphrey the Bear? Yes. Ones? Uh, that those are, that's like the better way to do this story. Yeah, it's the uh, the <laughs> pick a bead paper the, up. Put yeah, the, the, pe- the, yeah, the piece. Like, of that, that's better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bears so... look so similar too, don't they? They all yeah, yeah. seem like they modeled them after. Yeah, yeah. And there were there only two of those Humphrey the Bear. I don't know that. Yeah, I think there's only two. Well, only two that I can that I've seen. Yeah, Uh, there's the fishing one and the uh, the picking up trash one. But, but anyway, and yeah, I mean, it's just such a terrible song, and uh, the the whole sort of fighting over the girl, and uh, the uh, um, there's this whole section where they're falling in love and there's like cupid and they're in the clouds and and those the, two little bears or whatever that are like the assistants or whatever you know that are rolling out the grass for them or whatever i mean yeah I, I mean again the look of it's really cute but the whole thing is just yeah yeah and then there's so there's the big bear who's the rival bear and uh, there, there's just a whole lot of chasing, 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 chasing. <laughs> yes. And then Bongo <laughs> ends up slapping her, which is just so bizarre. I, <laughs> um, and uh, they end up in love and there we go. That's Bongo. But yeah, it's really, it's not good. It's just not good. It's not funny. It's not charming. It's, <laughs> teaching kids to slap i just can't with bongo it's not for me yep <laughs> so i hear yeah it's not i i i i was trying to watch it again with it with not i mean just with fresh eyes and i still yeah. didn't like it <laughs> no, no, no. oh my gosh uh so then we get to luana Patton. her birthday party is happening and she uh, is the little girl who was on uh, on Song of the South. Yes. And she, So Dear to My Heart. She was in that one, too. Yeah. A little, just a, a little child actress, you know, there at the Disney Studios in the late 40s, you know, mid to late 40s. Right. Um, and, and this is live action. So we go from all animated into this kind of now transition where Jiminy Cricket's observing into this live action scene with luana pans for her birthday party well it's just so weird that you would have you would have not only this little girl inviting this old man into her birthday party with no other nobody else there but then all these puppets it's it's so strange (laughs) it's so strange and i really feel like this is one of those two it's definitely a product of the time because I mean, I, I'm aware of Edgar Bergen, and I, mm-hmm. and I remember seeing him, uh, in, like, on TV and stuff when I was, you know, when I was very young. And, yeah. my, you know, my, my parents explained to me, because I also never thought he was that great of a ventriloquist. See, that's because... the thing. I mean, I'd heard, of course, about Charlie McCarthy. Yeah. So when I watched this movie, I was shocked because he, the first yeah. time. Because he's not very good. He's, he's just moving his lips, and yeah, and and uh, so I I wonder if audiences at the time thought it was really great because here again, you know, first off, Dinah Shore, who's very popular probably mm-hmm. at the time, and then same with Edgar Bergen, like oh, this is so fun. Where you know, look at it from our eyes, you know, at least from today, you know, and I think, wow, what's what's this? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking here on Wikipedia that comes from the reception. The New Yorker says, Walt Disney, who seems to have been aiming for mediocrity in his recent productions, has not even hit his mark with this film. (laughs) (laughs) So it sounds like a, a Time Magazine says, in spite of the Disney technical skill, it has never been a very good idea to mix cartoons and live actors with genial showmanship 
Mr. Bergen and company barely managed to save their part of the show. Most of the bongo section is just middle grade Disney, not notably inspired. And once Mickey and friends get involved with Willie, the whole picture peters out and becomes an off an oddly off balance and inconsequential uh, as oddly off balance and inconsequential as its title. So it sounds like it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. The critics <laughs> pretty, back yeah. then were. Yeah. yeah. But they're right. I mean, I, it's just so weird. It just does not. I mean, I'm sure. I think ventriloquism was more popular then, uh, and right. he was obviously a popular person, Charlie McCarthy, and yes, and uh, and, and Ed Bergen, But and I don't know if they, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't know if they were in other films too, and and you know if, if he was also like, clearly probably an early TV star as mm-hmm. well. But because uh, I mean, in the in Melody Time. You know, they start with the actors that are then going to narrate, and that's what they do here. But uh, here, it's just it's just so weird. Why would you have an old man be at a little girl's birthday party and like, as the only guest? As the only guest with all these with, puppets, like with, what? Yeah, with the creepy puppets. So there's <laughs> Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snurd, I believe, are the two oh, the two main puppets. puppets. And then he's also doing. <laughs> That that's when it opens up, he's doing that weird hand, you know, that character which is with his hand, you know. The, the oh painted. yeah. Yeah, that almost so looks weird. like a nun, you know. I mean, you're uh-huh. like some kind of weird. It's crazy. Scarf. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's it's weird. It's it's really it's really weird. I mean, Luana Pan, she's 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 cute, but but uh, yeah, I'm with you. It's like, where are your friends? Yeah, and it's not right. because it's not like your mother, this is, yeah, your mother is like this is not your dad. You know, clearly they, they did not establish that this was her dad. But anyway, weird. Yeah, I mean, I guess the closest we can think about it now is maybe if you'd have a, a sequence with the the like on Sesame Street with the Muppets, yeah. maybe that's somehow thinking, similar. It's kind of like a Sesame Street, maybe, thing, for but sure. <laughs> yeah, but still uh, weird. Yeah, it's still weird. But and, make, um, yeah. And then, you know, as we had mentioned earlier before, what's so weird too, and I know we'll, we'll, we'll continue to talk about this, but they keep coming back. So then not only do they introduce it, <laughs> then, wow. Anyway, please, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you again. No. Uh, so Mickey and the Beanstalk, it starts out with the ideal uh, Happy Valley. And uh, you have um, uh, My What a Happy Day. Which, and, is, I, which is a song I loved as a kid and I still... It made me smile rewatching it. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a cute song. Yeah, it is nice. And uh and Edgar Bergen is narrating it. And this is the last time that we hear uh we hear Walt Disney voice Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. So well, of... this this is when he he stopped doing it. I, and and sounds like he did part of it and then Jimmy McDonald did mm-hmm. p- part of it too, who took over from him from this, you know, from this point on. Yeah. Um but yeah that's time. pretty interesting I, and i i was wondering i mean i was trying to listen closely to it as i was watching like okay i wonder i think i think you probably can tell which one's walt but then you know, you know jimmy don't yeah. did a good job too so, so but still kind of sentimental yeah. in that regard i know and there's a lot of weird things about this this short this featurette really and originally i guess it was going to be a feature film and then they changed it yeah they changed it, changed it around and to, yeah to make it work into this package format yeah yeah and you have this harp that spreads the magic spell that creates everything happy in happy valley and uh the harp is taken and all of a sudden everything turns into a horrible Horrible place. <laughs> Unhappy Valley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns to misery, like the eighth grade. I thought that was a funny line. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so you have Goofy, Donald, and Mickey. And I didn't even think of, you sent over the trivia, but I hadn't even uh, really thought about the fact that so many, or none of the the female. Uh, fab five are here right so it's just um goofy donald and mickey yeah mini was planned in that full length feature that didn't you know that didn't yeah. get made and then they they cut her character in order to make it work i think you know for the time and and whatnot and i mean i think mini mini's missed for sure but mm-hmm. uh but still i 
I, I always love anything with, with Mickey doll and goofy too. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, well, especially that's... this, I mean, the very first part of this short is probably the best part of the whole movie. Yes. I think. And you have them <laughs> cutting this bread. So it's like a, Aww. it's like a piece of tra- like a transparency. Yeah. I know you when, they, when they're cutting that it. bean, they're cutting that bean. You know, it's like, oh, this is so sad. And Donald just getting crazier, yeah, and crazier and crazy mind. is hilarious. I can watch yeah. that all day. Yeah, and his eyes getting all googly, and he gets the axe, and he's like going out to the to the to the cow, <sighs> he's kill the cow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I love I really love that too, and and I think one of its strengths is that we these characters are so well established that they can just instantly go into that and you just get it, you know, cause you just know how these three characters are all supposed to act. And they're very consistent. Mm-hmm. I think with that too, which is cool. You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's one of the fun things about using, I think these existing. Well, yeah. Characters. And just seeing Donald just totally lose it. It's oh yeah. I mean, he completely loses it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> And, and, I, and I love how they animated that too. I did you know, too. It was really, really extreme. Yeah. So then Mickey sells the cow for beans, and Donald he can't. He can't do uh, it. Exactly. He, he's freaking out. And uh, and then they wake up, and uh, well, they first they have the fantasy sequence where they uh, sing uh, delicious dishes to yes. Funikuli Funikula. Yeah. <laughs> Finicula, yeah. Finicula, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> just, it's just a kind of a cute way. Yeah. And then they fall asleep. And this actually is my favorite sequence that I could watch over and over and over again mm-hmm. when the beanstalk grows mm-hmm. and they, uh, you know, they're in their beds and, and how they, their bodies are kind of going all over the place, but they never wake up, you know? <laughs> you right. Know? And, that to me just is almost like a classic uh, Mickey Donald and Goofy short, you know, from mm-hmm. from from uh, earlier in the in the decade or or, or even in the in the thirties, you know. Yeah, I, I I love that. I just can't. Yeah. I, we could watch it over and over. Yeah, that's I like that too. And there's a whole sequence where Donald fights this dragonfly, and you see this this whole like weird little action sequence in there and. And then they reach they reach the castle, and you, that's when you hear "fee five fo fum," and, and you see the the giant. You meet Willie the giant. Yeah, yeah. And there's the big feast and the golden harp up there. And uh, one thing that's kind of strange in this movie is that they give the giant magical powers. Yeah, that's so odd. Why me. did they do that? I have I don't no know idea. Why they did that? Because. Yeah, the giant can can magically morph into anything that he wants, mm-hmm. and so Mickey tries to talk him into morphing into a fly because there's a giant there's a giant fly swatter right that they could try to try to but he the giant even though he's completely stupid kind of <laughs> figures it out <laughs> that yeah. gonna, you know that they want to swat him and then he turns into a a pink rabbit a pink bunny and some other and stuff we and we don't know why yeah it's it's weird and uh so the the harp sings a song called my favorite dream and it's always which puts the giant to sleep it's just kind of his mm-hmm. standard yeah and which is why the giant wanted her in the first place right i mean just use for his own selfish right purposes yeah and then mickey tries to get the key from the pocket of the giant and uh and then they're able to free goofy donald and the harp and there's the giant chases them uh but then the giant falls down the they uh, saw the beanstalk yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) which like where did did they get this giant saw all of a sudden oh you're right yeah that's true (laughs) (laughs) but still (laughs) They're uh, able to get so the giant the giant falls to, giant his, falls. to his death. Yeah, sort of, the, sort the, of. Yeah, then the valley prospers, and and then the last part of the the movie is you see the giant in Hollywood. Yeah, the giant. <laughs> they they end up back at Luana Patton's party. 
you know, and Edgar yeah. Bergen's and, 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 and uh, they're, they're wrapping that up. And then the giant like pokes his head in the, through the window. And doesn't Jiminy, is you know, Jiminy Cricket sees him or something? I don't know if they actually, yeah, you know, something anyway. like that. Yeah. That, that, that's my favorite, actually. That's the one scene I do like with the giant because uh, as he's trotting through Hollywood, there's like Grauman's Chinese Theater, <laughs> you know, some of my favorite right. places. The old brown derby that he puts on. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that he puts on as a, a hat. <laughs> he, he walks off. So it's kind of a funny joke, but it's like, didn't he die? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. And what's he doing <laughs> at Luana Pan's party? Just like Edgar Bergen. What's he doing? <laughs> yes. And so uh, that's the end of the movie. My last ranking, I had it at 51 out of 57. So it was one of my least favorite. Oh, it's it's definitely one of my least favorites too. I have it uh, at number um 49 okay pretty close to me then yeah mm -hmm. I, you know i i don't just love the package films i mean i, no. I, I there's some i like more than others but definitely this one is the one i i like uh you know kind of yeah. least for sure i i at melody time and uh, make my music i i have an sort of a an affinity for and I'm, I'm not i don't know if i necessarily think they're good but they're entertaining and experimental and weird mm -hmm. uh but uh but yeah this one isn't even that it's just it's uh, not yeah, not the yeah. best See, and i really i really i love actually the adventures of Ichabod bottom mr toad uh, yeah that one's you know, really weird but entertaining um, but yeah yeah for <laughs> yeah. me it works yeah. better than than uh this one for sure oh no question no question so i did get a few comments uh, from Twitter about oh, cool. this movie. Um, so we have uh, <laughs> uh, Mega Crash the Hedgehog. He says, it was fine. The shorts shown in it are good, but the way they try to connect it all in one story feels clumsy. Jiminy Cricket has his moments, and I like the songs with one exception. The live action segments aren't terrible, but aren't particularly amusing either. It's six out of 10. And we have Animated Antic. He says, definitely the weakest of the package films. I think the two segments are both good, but work better separately. I love making the Beanstalk, but I like the TV version where Ludwig found Drake narrates yes. it more than the film version with Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Yeah, like we were talking about, yeah. Uh, Eli Sanza says, Bongo was overstretched ad nauseum. Mickey and the Beanstalk is the best part of the movie, but I kind of wish Edgar Bergen was more funny. Overall, a mixed bag. Uh, the Entity of Darkness says it was not good. <laughs> Edgar Bergen was the only entertaining part of the movie. Even as a kid, I always remember fast-forwarding over the bongo segment to get to Mickey and the Beanstalk. And then finally, Aaron Viking Meerkat says, I kind of enjoyed Fun and Fancy Free. Sure, it's not the best one, but Mickey and the Beanstalk is the most iconic in the Disney media. So there we go. Some different thoughts. Absolutely. Great thoughts <laughs> from, from your awesome followers. So uh, for next, we are not going to do the random number generator this month because we are going to have, uh, we are going to be talking about Mulan next month uh, with the live action film coming up. We thought it would be fun to talk about that one. And yes, uh, absolutely. So, yeah. So that, uh, and then we'll get back to doing our random <laughs> number generator uh, soon after that. And we are going to have a special guest, Kristen Mal Mal Maldonado, uh, on next month. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm she's so a, excited. She's a really fun Disney YouTuber. And uh, so that will be great. And uh, so check that. Make sure to look out for that and uh, get ready for Mulan next month and uh and so there we go we talked about it fun and fancy free is done fun and fancy free <laughs> we, we live to tell yes <laughs> so if you're listening let us know what you think of uh of this one uh we're at at disney talking on twitter you can send us your thoughts uh and then also uh you can let us know in the comment section uh we would love to hear uh, your thoughts on these movies and uh stanford where can people find you yes i'm on twitter at stanford clark and i have a movie blog and podcast at moviespastandpresent.com 
Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, everywhere. And you can also find me at the Homeworkies podcast. So make sure to check that out as well. And uh, thanks so much, Stanford. It's always so much fun. Uh, thank and, you, Rachel. Uh, it's great. <laughs> and we have our patron group. Please check that out. And also we have our merch store, which has some uh, animation junkie shirts. So check that out. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. Bye, everyone. Bye.